Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Monday. We're going to do a tour of my art studio today. But I, I need to tell you something first before I just show it to you. So COVID started uh, last March. But last February, I decided I was going to paint my art room. And it, not really the whole room, because the whole room doesn't need to be painted. I did that not too long ago. But I was going to do my accent wall. I have one wall that's colored, and then the rest of the room is white. So I was going to paint the accent wall a new color, because I do that fairly often, like maybe once a year, because I get like really bored of the color. And then COVID hit, before I had a chance to decide what color I was going to use. So I had painted a big splotch of white on the wall because the wall was hot pink and you really can't look at colors that go over a hot pink area. You have to look at it over white. So I painted this big white splotch on my wall and then COVID hit and I didn't go and look at paint swatches and which is what I usually do when I'm painting my room. I go and I try a color here, then I run back and I try another color until I get the right color. So I didn't do that. So I'm stuck with a big white splotch on my main wall. And I just wanted to let you guys know how it got there and why it was there. And it won't be there through the spring. As soon as I get my vaccination, which is coming soon, I'll be able to go out. I've been really good with COVID. I haven't gone out. I social distance. I wear my mask because my family was so high risk. Now everybody is getting their shots and I'll be able to get back to normal, hopefully soon. <laughs> so you guys are going to see my art studio the way I have it, except it's a little bit cleaner because if I had shown you what it looked like before, you would have been like, how do you work? Take a look. This is where I am when I'm producing the artwork for my channel. And as you can see, it's very tiny. So there's the big white splotch of paint so let's get that over with so we'll start with my working area and you can see i have a desk and i have a very big screen because i'm blind as a bat <laughs> and i like everything big then i have my shelving system over here which i actually have a video on how i made that i made this shelf system and it holds more than you can ever imagine and I'll let you look inside of it in just a minute. I have some special lights here. This is an art light. And I'm going to talk about this light in just a few minutes. This is the best light I have ever had. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. I'm just going to do an overview. And then I have my back screen so that I don't have a shadow. This is how I sit. <laughs> Scrunched in that corner. And then I have another one of those containers that I make. I make them out of wine boxes and pencils. These are my nubbies. More pencils. And more pencils. And these are all Prismacolors. Then I have two pissed off birds. They're not happy with me right now because I rearranged their cage. And you can find them in the way back, pouting. And I took some of their toys out because they were getting ratty and I'm gonna replace them. I make a lot of their toys because bird toys are very expensive and they're only made out of beads and colorful things. So I make most of theirs. So they're not happy with me today. Then I have my shelving system over here. All my books, now remember, I talked about the top shelf. That's all the way up there. That's my top shelf. And that's for pencil sets that I don't use every day. It gets delegated to that because to get that stuff down and look around up there, I have to get a, a stool or something to stand on. I can reach all my books. And that's not all my books. That's just the ones that I really, really like. And I keep them in here. Then my father built me this, and I'll let you take a closer look. I have all my inks. Now, these are some cool things right here, 
And then I have two more down here. And those are the actual cores that will be going into the pencil set that I'm creating with Andy. So we're up to the point of picking cores and there's going to be a video where I show you everything that I have. And then I've got my Gotta Deal liquid markers and of course Bob. When I'm not here, you've got to pass everything through Bob. So these are all my markers. Markers have to be um, stored on their side and I realize that this is kind of precarious being the way it is, but it works. And when I want to take my markers out, this whole section lifts out. I could bring it to my desk. But markers get stored on this side. Then I have my first Lazy Susan art thing here. And I keep all my skin tones, my browns, and my grays in here. These are my overflow pencils. Um, it's, they're not my working pencils. I replace my working pencils with these pencils. So when I find them on sale and I grab a whole bunch, they'll go into here. And this is more cores that I have to go through. Then I have another one of my overflows and they're labeled. And these are all Prismacolors, except for the cores and those are Andy's cores. A magnifying glass for art, but I there I don't really use that. I can actually take that out of here because I have so much better. Like that was my old one and I had better stuff. And I have a whole empty shelf that I have because I need room to grow. So I have a whole empty shelf that's just waiting to be filled. Now I'm gonna show you the best of the room, my favorite part. This is my wall of pencils. When I talk about my favorite pencils and the pencils that um, I use all the time, here they are. And that's some of my wall tins. These are actually antiques. And well, not that. That's I just like the tin. But that's an antique, and that's an antique. And those actually have the pencils in it, but the boxes are sealed. And the pencils are, are in that uh, cypher top, too. So if I need them, I can just pull them out. The, the actual, that's actually Velcro. They have, like, these Velcro clasp things that you could put on the wall. But this is my favorite. Now, to explain this, those tins are pencil sets that come without a tin. So if they come, like, in a plastic or in a, um, a cheap... Um, paper box, you know, cardboard box. I bought these over at the dollar store and I just labeled them so I could find the sets easily. And they, they'll they hold up to like 100, 120 pencils. A lot of pencils in there. I mean, if you look at... You could see it holds a lot. And this is the Brett Funnel 180 set. I used two. I'll put that back together when I'm done. So then I have my Cezannes, my Marco Renoirs, my Faber Castells. Now I could reach all of this, and yes, I have. To, I'm painting this, so I painted the background uh, white too. I have my Ship and Farbins, and then there's another set behind it. Um, I forgot what. I think it's my Zena colors. And then I have my Amazon Basics, my Deli, and my Star Joys. Then I have like my middle shelf. And these have three more sets. Um, I think that's Castle Art or Shuttle Art. Um, my Brett Fun of Squares and... I forgot what else is underneath there. Like a double. Like I have double sets and that's over there. These are my color it markers. And and I was really happy. When you turn the marker box on its side, that's what you get. So I was like, oh, it's colorful. This works really good. So that's my color it. And then I have another color it box. I think some cases came in it because these two 
are color it cases and you can tell because they have like a leather band on them right there it's upside down and I there's like uh, pencils in there and um, I think some markers then I have these are These are Prismacolors, but they're barrels and eagles. And that's my collection. It's a lot in here. Then I have my Z-Zone, which is over here. And I think my Faber Pastels. And these have more uh, barrels and eagles. Pencils, Sanford. And they're all full. Then we have down here... Guess who? Uh, he's got his light. And that's a heat lamp. So he, he stays on the bed all day. From the minute like he gets up to I put him in to his cage. And he just runs around. Plenty of room. Now this bed doubles as our guest bed. Or one of our guest beds. So you might get a pissed off lizard if he catches you sleeping in his bed. Then I have this cart. And every drawer has sets. These are smaller sets. These are um, watercolor. I haven't had a chance to do a picture in those yet. But then I have my, my Lyra, my... Crayola, my Durant Metallics, my Magic Fly, Blah, my Naomi, my Marcos, and then I think I just have some some random other sets in there. I think altogether I'm close to fifty sets. And then as you work your way, oh, this is this is cute. This pencil, it's Diamond Art, and I have some pictures up there. Of my that my father did for me diamond art and they once I get that wall painted and these colors together um that's the artwork for that wall and remember I said that if I don't like a pencil I just put it on my wall make wall art well that's one of them that I'm doing and I have nine I think uh, panels that I'm working on. I don't have that many pencils that I don't like. This one's done, and I'm going to have like nine panels all together of wall art. It's a work in progress. Okay, let me show you over here. I do not survive without this box. Bring the light over. Okay, so this was a wine box. And I painted it. And there's a painting technique that I'm going to show you. This is uh, for holding the camera. So it's always right in front of my face. So I have all my erasers. Everything up here has erasers in it. And they're all different types. They're mag magnetized. So I have all different ones. My electric and my putty and Andy sent me these and they're not really nice um, they're harder erases so sometimes when you have a stubborn stain and you want to get them out I use these and I have a whole bunch of them then I have my whole binds and my um, my whites and my blacks I have some fine line markers some sketching pencils, my pink nail polish. This is by Faber Castell. And you take a piece of this, a little piece, and it'll pick up all the um, little crumbly, crumbly bits that you get from coloring. It just lifts them off the page so you don't have to swat at them. So I have a lot of that. I use that a lot. These are my magnifying glasses, which are probably dirty right now because I haven't... A little dusty. I have like a couple of pairs of these. 
and they're magnifying glasses. You can wear them over your readers and they really make a big difference in the coloring. You just, you never miss a, um, a spot. A place for my scissor because I'm always losing my scissor and my blending pen and an X-Acto knife. Then over here, I've got, I'm going to teach you guys how to use this. This is the greatest tool ever. It's for teaching and um, it's a color wheel and it will actually identify every single color you can ever imagine in the spectrum. So I'm going to teach you how to use that in a couple of weeks. Then I've got down here my Chroma Flow because I was working with them. More pencils. These are oddball things. I can't even get it out right now. And these are all other um, color wheels. So that's just random stuff. And then I have my shot glass for water when I'm doing um, anything that needs water for. And more Holbein's. I have a lot of Holbein's. And my Kum uh, sharpener, which I have been using nonstop lately. This thing is the greatest sharpener. If I am not using my electric sharpener, this thing is out on my desk. I love it. I'm so glad that you guys told me to get it. And then, oh, just random stuff back there. Nothing special. Just my label maker, my paper cutter my headphones, and then people ask me all the time, my printer, I have the brother, and that's Business Smart Plus Series. You could do everything with this thing. And then I have some more art that's going up on my walls that my father did. If you could see them. More diamond paintings. He loves it. So those still have to be hung up. I didn't show you this. This is my flat drawer. Because markers and pens need to be stored flat. This thing is the greatest thing. And I have all my pens. You have to keep um, paint uh, markers flat. You should be keeping your Pasca flat. So those are my acrylic uh, pens. And then some, just some more. My gel pens, also gel pens should be kept flat. I got this from U.S. Art Supply. I'll leave the link. What I loved about this, and it's going to happen this summer. I'm going to paint this. It's raw wood. So it's great for like any decor you want. Um, thinking of doing this in a rainbow and doing painting clouds the sky up here so I, I i change my mind every other day so i only have one of these i have to get another one i would recommend this but i really that it has its drawbacks there's better ones on amazon for it these drawers are a waste of space they hold virtually nothing i used to and then i lose track of what's in them so i wish that I, st I had the space and either the this whole thing was smaller because this is a waste of space over here I could have had this thing smaller and take not taking up so much space or they could have opened it up and I could have had maybe another level for the pencils so this one not so good but but I use it's great I mean it's a great thing but there are better my next one, I'm, it's going to be different. I've already picked out the one that I want. The set of pencils that I'm using are Starjoy. You know that um, roll-up pouch that he does? This is it. I love these pencils. I'm going to do a review of these pencils, but I love them. And it's so weird because I didn't think I was going to. And I, I really did. So I'm going to do a review on them shortly. There's Ming's tank. It looks over the room. So he can always see me and watch me when I'm doing anything when he's in there at night. 
He only goes in there at night. And then, of course, I put the heat uh, lamp over him. There's a acrylic cover because you can't see it on the top. So only half of it is open to the air because they need the heat. So it keeps it nice and toasty warm in there. And when he's not out of the cage, you'd find him in, in there. But he's always out of the cage. There he is. Still sitting in the same spot, enjoying his uh, heat lamp and his freedom. Oh, and there's my monkey. I didn't show you my monkey. I've had that monkey since I was born. It was in my grandparents' house. I, every time I went to visit them, I played with this monkey my entire life. And when, of course, they're gone now. And that monkey reminds me of my grandparents. I think it was a toy that belonged to my grandfather, actually, because my father tells me it was in his house when he was young. I'm always saying that I'm blind as a bat. I mean, you guys must have heard me say that about a hundred times, but I don't think I've ever told the story of why I say this. Going back over 20 years ago, it was the week that Princess Diana was killed. I was working in a doctor's office and it was a pediatrician and a child came in that had what is known as the adenovirus. Well, within, I would say, uh, 20 minutes to an hour, I had the adenovirus myself. We didn't know that the kid had it when he came in, and or we would have put him in a, in a contagious room. I had this virus so bad, and it affects the eyes to the point where my eyes swelled and I could not see. I also became, it was very, very painful to be in any sort of room with a light in, light on. I had to be in total darkness, and this adenovirus lasted a month. It was terrible. The effect after the adenovirus was that I had a scar on one of my corneas. Now, it only comes out, and it's, it's weird because it only comes out in low-light situations. So I've just learned to live with it. Um... I, it doesn't normally block my vision unless it's really dark. And then if it's dark, you really don't care because it's dark. So I don't drive at night or I'll drive very little at night. Um, I can compensate out of my other eyes. So it's not impossible for me to drive. If I had to, I do. But um, I usually don't. Um, I'm always tapping my foot in front of me to make sure that I'm not going to trip down a staircase or something. Things like that. I've learned to live with it. It does not affect my art in any way because I keep my art room very brightly lit. Got a lamp and this lamp is the most amazing art lamp. It's different than any other lighting lamp that you can get. And I'm going to show you it now. This is the BenQ and it's got a lot of really cool features. Okay, you see the way it's shaped? When a lamp is shaped like a normal lamp, it concentrates the light down into one place. With the BenQ lamp, it's it goes up and it spreads the light out. So this entire desk is brightly lit. I can't reach it. I'm so short. Okay, so here is this. You stick your finger in and that's how it turns on and off. Off. And then you leave it on and it's on. So it's like touch in the inside of that. Then this little thing over here, this adjusts the temperature of the light. It's cool. And now it's warm. You, it's totally color adjusted. The arm of this lamp goes into any position. And then it swirls. And then you can put it up. You have to leave your finger in it for two seconds for it to turn on. And I usually leave it on, I leave it on cool. And that's not touch cool. That's like cool versus warm light. A blue light versus a yellow light. So this is by a company BenQ. It's not a cheap lamp. I'll tell you that much. I usually show you all the really cool things that are the best prices that I could find. Fortunately, this lamp is not cheap. It runs, um, depending on the style of lamp you get, it runs about $200.
But if you have any sort of vision problems it, and you enjoy working on art, this is a game changer because you do not get eye tiredness. You can read by this lamp. You, you don't get the eye strain that you get with conventional lights. Th this lamp is amazing for me. And that's the company right there. And I got this off of Amazon. You know how you're always seeing this in my videos? This is what it is. I have people that have asked me that. Like, what are those legs that sit on your desk? And that's it. I had one that had a Band-Aid on it. And that was just because they're not that cheap. But they work really great. Um, so they, they're a little bit off balanced on my desk. So I have these little pads that go underneath here that balance it out. I just This one is new, so I haven't put it on. So the last one I was using um, just some bandages. <laughs> wasn't very attractive, but that's what it was. And then I have this one also that goes into every position. Okay, so that's it's all my stuff. You have nosed into everything. There's Ming Snacks right there. And some more art books. So that is my video for today. And I will see you in my next video. Take care.